So ladies and gentlemen, this evening on our NHL history column, this is a special request for one of my good friends in my own family. I'm not going to say who, but he knows a lot about hockey. He knows who he is. We're going to talk about number 22 for the Montreal Canadiens, Stephen John Steve Shutt. Now, Steve Shutt is considered by many uh, NHL hockey fans, especially the Montreal Canadiens, as one of the uh, the top money players of his era. Now, he was inducted in the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1993, and he played 13 seasons in the NHL, 12 with the Canadians and one with the LA Kings. Now, for the Canadians, he was part of the great 1970s dynasty, winning cups in 1973 and from 1976 to 1979. Now, Steve Shutt could be called a lot of things. Excellent skater, excellent puck handler, excellent shooter, excellent presence in the dressing room and on the bench. He was a money player all the way around. And uh, a lot of people consider him still the most underrated Montreal Canadiens players of all time because nobody took him seriously. But when he didn't watch him, the puck was in a net or he was feeding Lemaire or Lafleur on what is still considered the greatest line in NHL history. I know some lines may have more points, but the effectiveness and the impact that shot Lemaire Lafleur was like a mantra. Uh, shot passes Lemaire, Lemaire passes Lafleur, he scores. And uh, But uh, Shot uh, first came into recognition of all things to Quebec International uh, Pee Wee Hockey Tournament where a lot of players have been discovered through the years. He played with uh, various uh, minor hockey teams in the Toronto area as a child. And that's where the Pee Wee Tournament had become recognized. Now, he had a great, great uh, junior career, starting off in the North, the York Rangers, where he had 27 points in 17 games in 1969. He went on to the Toronto Marlies, and with the Marlies, he just really piled up the goals, uh, especially in 1970-71, when he had 70 goals in, the, in 62 games with 123 points. Next year, he had 63 goals uh, in 58 games, and coming out of the Marley program, one of the most successful Toronto Marley Bowl, Bowl prayers of all time. Now, uh, Montreal took him in a draft, and he was sent to the Nova Scotia Voyageurs uh, for a little bit of fine-tuning. He was with the Voyageurs for six games in 72-73. Ended up with the big club in 73. In his first three seasons, he had a great progression in his uh, playing style. He went from basically a second- and third-line player to a player Montreal could really, really... Uh, use on the, the power play. Now, he wasn't the biggest player of all time at 5'11 and 180, but uh, on the left wing, he had great puck handling ability. He wasn't the greatest skater, but uh, it was something we call uh, in the sport spatial awareness like Gretzky had. Uh, you know, when he knows uh, where the other players are, his own players are. He was known for consistently able to get into open areas of coverage on the ice, which made like three on threes feel like three on twos, two on twos feel like two on ones. He would move away from the defenseman, move to sort of like a boxing style, and it was very interesting to see manipulate other players on the ice. And uh, he would, uh, some um, experts like uh, Stan Feischler and uh, Danny Galvin noted that he really anticipated where the puck was going by arriving there a little bit late or a little bit before the play. It, uh, it it was a very unique thing to see. And if you look at the old YouTubes, uh, you know, it, it shows how uh, it, w it went about. Now, um, there's very, very uh, comments on Shutt's career through the years, especially, you know, how he had uh, the number, as we call it, on certain goalies. Uh, Don Cherry said that, uh, you know, the Boston Bruins great player Jerry Cheevers was actually in terror of Shutt. It's not because he was the most, uh, you know, aggressive player. But he had the puck, there was a good chance it was going to go in. You never know what's going to happen. Eh? And uh, Sir Savardi's teammate said, you know, Shutt had the best timing of any player he ever played with. He was always in the right place, and, you know, luck had nothing to do with it. He was always there to put the puck uh, in the net. Um, considered, you know, a top goal scorer of his era. He had a different arsenal of shots. He had a great snapshot, wrist shot, uh, you know, um, uh, slap shot. Uh, but he was... You know, well known for going for the uh, the accurate areas, especially to uh, pick the corners or hit the five hole. Now, uh, his accurate slap shot was very dangerous because it was not just fast. When you have an accuracy of his shot, uh, he would do it in full stride. You couldn't really adjust. Uh, 
it was what he called a two-stepper where he would pass the blue line and just let a rifle go and uh, you know uh, Billy Smith also noted that you know uh, he had an unbelievable shot and uh, you know he was so accurate uh, which is pretty scary he said for a goalie like Billy Smith would never give any praise to anybody but Steve Shutt had the respect of his teammates and the goalies because he was known again to uh, to put in the rebound uh, to hit the you know hit the goal the garbage goals and uh, Shut uh, would 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 uh, have a little bit of self-deprecating humor through the years. He said, "I'm the only player I know that could score goals and make it boring." But as uh, Ken Dryden quoted him in the game, he said about Gilo Fleury, "He looks ready, but not too ready to be rebound tonight." But no matter what he was playing for, he was uh, very strong in the power play, a great shot, and he was emulated or even copied by various modern players. Like the, in previous generations, Del Stewart and Gordy Drillen and uh, Phyllis Mazzito and uh, later on Corey Pear were known for uh, uh, crease goals or goals uh, that are, you know, rebounds or double shots or triple shots. Uh, if Shutt had an opportunity to put it in, and you've seen the 1984 series uh, against the Nordiques when he was on the downturn, how his style brought Montreal back in Game 6, that infamous uh, quarterfinal series where... Both teams ride it in the second period and into the third and shot basically use his skill to really put the nail in the coffin in Nordiques that year. But that was one of many times where he showed his great skill. Um, but Shot basically, in published reports, he said this many times in anecdotes, the reason why he was so good with his reflexes, when he played hockey, he always had about 15 kids on the ice and uh, there was no room and uh, you had to be really, really quick with your hands. Now... We're talking about the early part of the season where it really became big with the power play work and Montreal's rise to the second part of the 1970 dynasty. 75, uh, 74, 75, he had 30 goals. 76 season, he had 45. And then the record for left wingers, that great 76, 77 season, he had 60 goals and 105 points, including another seven goals and eight assists in the playoffs. So, I mean, I mean excuse me, eight goals and 10 assists in the playoffs. So 68 goals in less than, you know, uh, in 94 games played was an outstanding total for the NHL at the time. Only Reggie Leach had comparable numbers. Now, uh, again, the cup winner in 78, 49 goals, 79, 37 goals. But again, in the 80s, had a downturn because, you know, Lafleur was on his downturn and that impacted uh, Shutt as well because uh, Lafleur was uh, Shutt's best line mate. Uh, you know, he missed, uh, he didn't really miss Lemire, but when Lafleur started to go uh, down, he really missed the flower, and uh, you see the numbers were going uh, going down, and when Lafleur retired, shut uh, motivation to stay with the Habs kind of waned. He was eventually uh, passed on to the Kings, where he wrapped up uh, his career in 80, 80 with a 41 goal, 41-point uh, total in 59 games. Now, uh, the NHL Hall of Fame called, like, like I said, in 93, and a uh, big total for uh, shot, 424 goals, 817 points, and 50 more goals in the playoffs in 99 games. And another, he was very strong internationally, played with possibly the best Team Canada squad of all time, the 1976 uh, Canada Cup, where he had uh, a goal and two assists in six games on the team that was uh, loaded with talent. Now, in retirement, he's been quite busy with a hockey commentator, from 93 to 97, and, uh, excuse me, before, uh, he was a hockey commentator before he joined the Habs, and from 93 to 97, as the assistant coach to uh, head coach Mario Trombley, he's a good friend in the squad. Um, he's also involved in uh, Toromond Industries as a manager of recreational facilities and service, and that's where the majority of his uh, post-hockey career has been for uh, two decades. Now, he does tour every once in a while with the... Uh, the Canes old-timer squads for fundraisers. And, uh, you know, he is probably one of the most jovial players in the NHL at the time. And you meet him, he's self-deprecating. There's a whole bunch of quotes about him and Ken Dryden's The Game. And, uh, you know, he... Uh, you know the theory of somebody that they say, I'm just glad to be here? Steve Schott was glad to be anywhere. It doesn't matter if it was on the team bus, uh, with the fans, uh, you know, on the road. But my God... The NHL would know Steve Shutt when he retired or it was no longer the league. It's almost like some of the fun went out of the association. I tell you why. You're watching 
the NHL on Saturday nights, and Montreal might be ahead uh, behind two one or ahead two one or whatever, and you could feel that Shot was going to do something, especially in those uh, late nineteen seventies uh, seasons, where again uh, you know he scored, uh, not say at will, but I mean when you put in uh, over a hundred fifty goals on three seasons, and uh, the funny part about this is another quote uh, Shot said, you know when you score. 60 goals a season next year, he wants you to score 70. And he only scored 50 goals once. But it felt like it was a 50-goal score every year because every every goal was big. And But Steve Schutt was never considered a dirty player. He would rarely get into a fight or uh, have, a, have a major issue. I don't know if any team was out to hurt Steve Schutt because he had a consistent, consistency. Uh, you know, he's, he played the full amount in uh, three consecutive seasons. 77 games, 78, 72, you know, we rarely miss a game. Very, very consistent. <coughs> but again, the 84 season where he lost a, a lot of uh, games uh, because of uh, injury, but it came back in the playoffs. That was the last hurrah, and I think uh, Shot basically knew that the new players were coming along. 13 seasons in the NHL is not a long career uh, again, but, uh, you know, he was only 32 when he was out of the league, and nowadays I think what the different formats, he could have played longer. He would have definitely scored 500 goals. It was just a matter of time, but maybe that, like I said, not playing with Lafleur, there was a lot of energy out of his game. You know, you look at, uh, all I can say this, you know, you look at a batting lineup and you see uh, uh, the guy hits four cleanup if he doesn't get the home run. Well, the number five batter can, can get the leavings too. He was the best, uh, he was the best player on left wing of his era. He was probably one of the most underrated players uh, because, you know, how could you overrate him? You know, you say the word Steve Shutt now and you say goal score. I mean, for my generation, the word Steve Shutt means everything in relation to goal scoring, to basically finishing the play, to having the great shot, to have the great motivation, to put the puck in. And he never showed up the other team. He would never do it as Gilbert Dion or whatever. Again, that was just his style. Steve Shutt was a very interesting cat. Sort of like Peter Mahovlich, but in the case of Peter Mahovlich, he, I don't think Steve Shutt ever got along badly with any of his teammates. If anything, he was just like kind of uh, the number two to Gila Fleur, and boys, what a what a great number two he was. So if you have a chance, uh, especially the 84 game six against, six against Quebec, that third period, you look at the games against Boston, uh, game six in 78, uh, game, uh, game seven in... Uh, 79, you look at some of the early games in 77, especially the weekend he scored his 60th goal. It was quite an energy in the forum because the 77 team arguably is one of the greatest uh, squads of all time, if not the greatest. So again, on this uh, Saturday night, we're, we're seeing uh, the opening of the, uh, the, five, the Frozen Four for the NHL. San Jose and the St. Louis is going to put everybody to sleep, but I think the Boston-Carolina series will have something for everybody because that again could go... A long distance because, you know, the Bruins, when they're good, they're good. And when they're bad, they're mediocre. So you never know. So, ladies and gentlemen, have a great uh, night. And uh, uh, keep your stick in the ice because the playoffs are not done yet. Have a good one. Bye.